Hello YouTube! Looks like it's another snowy day here. But for today we are going to take the, uh, the 350 motor out of this Suburban. And uh, this is a 1999 Suburban. So, a lot to do to get this out. I had an issue with the exhaust manifold, the bolt that attaches to the head, the bolts that go this way. Those are 916 heads, and they're easy to remove, but the bolts on the back side, there's three of them, and they're 15 millimeter. And I got all three of those, and all three of the ones on the other side turned about maybe a half turn, and then it got so tight on the rust that I thought it would break if I turned anymore, so I went ahead and took the heads off and leave the manifolds on, and that's kind of some bad news with the head. I don't know if you can see, but the cylinder head is cracked. Oh yeah, and the point of this video, I don't know what the point is, it's just to kind of show what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get the Suburban drivable again, that's really all I want to do here. So, maybe you can see that. See if we can see the crack. Yeah, you should be able to see that, I would think. See that line right there, right above the spark plug hole? Yeah, that's cracked. It's odd because usually I see a crack from the spark plug hole to the exhaust valve cracked through, or sometimes between the intake and the exhaust valve. But this is weird. It's a, it's just a lone crack on the exhaust. Uh, I mean, on the spark plug hole only. And I think there was one other cylinder like that. Oh yeah, here it is. This other one here. I don't know if you can see. Well, that's much more smaller of a crack. This one's fine. You know, this chamber's fine. This chamber's no problem. This chamber's extremely cracked. This is a little crack. Anyway, this, this head's trash. This was the driver's side head. But, uh, you know, it's really weird because the passenger side head looks, I mean, the debris and stuff and the dirt looks so similar, but there's no crack at all, so I can reuse the driver side head, but this passenger side head is junk. I mean, the valve springs and little pieces inside of it I could reuse, of course. But anyway, I believe what they say, what happened with this is, uh, Someone ran it without oil, or the oil leaked out, and, you know, going down the highway it seized and fell apart and all this kind of stuff, so here we can see a little bit of that. Where'd it go? I don't know how well you can see. Oh yeah, see that huge hole there? Yeah, a bunch of junk uh, flew out of there. So this will be really interesting to see what it looks like when we take this out. I don't see any obvious hole in the cylinder or broken pistons yet, so maybe we don't have to take too many parts, or don't have to change too many parts. Uh, something else is kind of funny. Look, this this truck is silver, right? Silver. There, you can see. But now look up under here, and you can see the hood is black, or it was black, uh, but the top is silver. And then firewall is white and these little crevices in the fender is white and then this door jam is white so I guess this uh, truck used to be white oh you can see it really good there and then someone painted it silver or maybe they you know, had it white and broke a bunch of stuff and changed a bunch of parts and it was Skittles colored and they got tired of the colors and then they painted it silver, who knows. Anyway, uh, but something that makes me think about that too is all the emblems are missing. You know, right there, isn't it supposed to say something? 
like GMC or Suburban or something like that. And then on the back, there's nothing either. On the back, I thought it was supposed to say something back here somewhere, but it says nothing, so. Oh, well. So this, now with this video is five minutes long, maybe I can show you, I can get this out quickly. Uh, I guess, I don't know how much detail you want to know to get to this point. Basically just unhook all the wire and they're difficult to get without breaking the plastic. You have to use this uh, flat head screwdriver. And then mostly all the bolts that thread into the block are either a half inch head or a 9 16 head. The cylinder head bolts were a half inch head and the rockers were uh, 5 8 so I unscrewed all that stuff and like I said I had this issue with the exhaust manifold it would have been nice to take those off but I couldn't and then I just raised the motor up a little with this crane you can see I use a cylinder head bolt and a 3 8 chain so you probably can figure that out and then it got kind of snagged on the oil filter on the driver's side because this has 4x4 and it has the 4x4 oil filter. So there you can see there's the 4x4 oil filter. See how it pops out at a 90 degree angle? So to get around all that mess, I jacked it up a little bit and then unscrewed the bolts that hold this little clamshell. See this little clamshell looking thing? Got three bolts that go into the block, and then that fell off. And apparently the 4x4s get some special other extra piece. This is sandwiched between those parts, the block and the other part I just showed you. And it's got a 15 millimeter headed nut on the bell housing you gotta remove. So and what I did I guess is also kind of wrong. I this you know this is a Vortec because see how it has the plastic uh, timing chain cover and the Vortecs have special piston rings and special pistons with a more expensive ring I don't know I don't like that but a lot of special stuff and then um, what was I gonna say oh but since it's Vortec it also the transmission the bottom it doesn't have that really big u-shaped thing that you can take off it's just not much access and there's this tiny little steel thing uh, oh there it is over there see that piece of junk with the snow on it see it's a tiny little crevice and you undo a bunch of 10 millimeter headed nuts but they won't come off until you take the starter off and the starter's kind of jammed because they made it a round hole instead of a slot so all that means extra work so I took all the bell housing bolts out and I'm leaving the torque converter in and hope the whole thing comes out together and what else? Oh, I think you should need to know about the special bolts. I discovered these are difficult to remove. These are the bolts that go on the back, uh, attach the transmission, the bell housing transmission to the block. And it's the 916 head here. A lot of YouTube videos tell you this is a 14 and some say this is a 13. Well, that's really not right. This is for sure a 9 16 head, and this is a 3 8 bolt. This is a 13 millimeter nut, so this is the stupidest bolt made in the world because it's got English threads on one side and it's got metric on the other side. So, there you go. So, to get this out, I used, let me think. The birds are fighting over there. Uh, anyway I just think I used a what is that? Yeah, anyway I just used the uh, 13 millimeter get the nuts off a wrench and got all the nuts off and then this is tricky to get out so you have to use an extra long 9 16 wrench and I think that's really the only tool you can use to get this out there's no space for a a ratchet or anything and you need a deep socket because of the the stud and it's a big mess so when I put all this junk back together I'm thinking I might just cut this garbage off of here 
and it hold the wire with a zip tie or something so if this gets broken later again then I can more quickly get it out so. anyway I, I really spent pretty much all day doing this it doesn't look like much but it's a lot uh, okay so let's hopefully that everything is removed and it will just come right on out um, make a really great video and be unbelievably entertaining okay or something okay oh there it is there's that little sheet metal piece I guess Wire is nagging a little bit. Oh, soft pipe. Way. It's always everything in the way, you know. Oh, and of course I had to take the radiator out. I don't know if that was necessary, but I did. Oh. I see already we're going to have a little difficulty here. Wow, wasn't that exciting? I don't know if what you got to see. There you go. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, it's touching the hood. Ooh, it's almost out, yay. that the most exciting thing you ever saw? Yeah. That's great. Let's lower it. So 
this came out just fine together. I thought maybe it would. That's nice. See, here's the bolt you would have to took out if you... And of course, this is confusing. This is a 15 millimeter head, and there's three of them equally spaced. So, yeah, in general, everything that threads into the blocks, English bolt, and all the other stuff is a metric bolt. Uh, oh, and of course, stuff that threads into the crankshaft is also English bolt, and the uh, the it's confusing also because the all the bolts on the intake manifold are metric bolts except there's two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. Those bolts that hold the manifold on, those are English bolts, and they take a half inch. Uh, I guess let's lower it and see what kind of destruction is inside. Yeah, let's take the oil pan off. dries rock hard so you have to be careful. doing still sort of here we go Really? 
there. Okay, well this is taking too long so I'm going to make another video and show you the junk inside. Okay.